Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Pi Network Node app on a Windows 10 PC. Now, when you have this installed, it's actually going to work in three different phases. The first one is a computer app, and it allows you to access the Pi Network application from a computer. And you don't get the full functionality. You cannot mine from your computer, but you can access things like chat and the message boards from your desktop. So you don't have to always be on your phone, which is convenient for some users. The second part is the node. Now, the node, when you install all the required software, like the Docker application on your computer, you then enable a feature for the node interface that allows you to submit transactions to the blockchain, verify the validity of the blockchain, and enable mobile app users to submit transactions. Now, once you've done that for a while, and you've shown a track record of how long you've been using it, and the team understands your availability, you can then apply to become a super node. And when you become a super node, you're able to participate in the consensus, and you're able to help other nodes or super nodes get the latest state of the blockchain. So those are the three phases that you can enter into when you install the Pi Network node on your Windows 10 PC. And I'm gonna walk you through the steps to get it started, so let's take a look. So we're gonna begin at our Windows 10 desktop and I'm gonna open up my browser here. And as you can see, and I'm already at the Pi Network homepage and mindpi.com is the official website. And to download the Pi node, you can see the link up here at the top. We're gonna to click on that and we'll be able to download the application right off the site. So we'll click on download and I'm gonna be doing the Windows version and you can see the latest version is 0.4.5. So let's click on download and it's about 118 megs in size. That download's complete, so I'll start the setup right now. So the setup's complete, and it just created a shortcut on the desktop over here, and now it's launching the app. So it's asking me to log in, and I'll click on log in, and what we have to do is sign in through the mobile app. So I actually have my mobile app in here, on LD player. And I have this set up through an emulator. If you want to know how to do that, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps of the setup. Okay, I'm going to open up my Pi app. Since I'm already logged in, it should go in right away. And then we can do this side by side. Okay, so it's logged in in my desktop over here. And then I have the node on this side. And it's going to ask me for, to enter this code. So I'm just going to the menu here and I'm going to select node and it's gonna to wanna to use a sign-in code. So that's the sign-in code over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. Code has been submitted and now it's logged in on the node. So I'll just uh, close out of the emulator. I don't think I'm gonna need it anymore. Let's keep it over here for now and then I'll dismiss this. So it looks like we're good. Everything's synced up properly and I can close out of the emulator. I shouldn't need it anymore. Now we're in the node and we want to activate the node. So there's a bunch of software that we're going to have to install and I'll walk you through those steps right now. First option is to click on continue and it's going to let us know that we need to install the Docker and we're also going to have to open up some ports on our router. So let's go ahead and first do the first step and that is to install the Docker. So I'm going to cl click on this link over here to download the Docker and I'll be using Chrome. There we go and I'll download it. So the Docker is 520 megs in size, just to keep that in mind. Uh, if you have a disk space issue or if you're using an SSD, which is sometimes limited for some users. Okay, I'm gonna say yes. And we have the components installed and shortcuts created, so I'll click on okay. Okay, so it looks like Docker has now completely installed. I can close and restart it. And it's gonna restart and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so we have it rebooted. I'm just loading up the node again. Might take a second here. Okay, so here we are at the main screen. We can click on continue. And let's just scroll down here. So it looks like the Docker is installed. Uh, run Docker daemon, that's not running right now. So we need to install, or it looks like we're gonna have to update some software components. So let me just open it up right now. And uh, so here's the user agreement. So I'm just gonna quickly go through this and accept the terms and then click on accept. And here's the update that we're gonna have to install right now. So I'm gonna click on the link. It's opening up my browser here. Let's see if it automatically downloads. It doesn't look like it's downloading right away. So there's a package. So there is the link to download the package and it's gonna download it and now I can run it. So we'll click on open file and just click on next. Say yes to the prompt and let it complete here. We'll click on finish. And if I scroll down a bit here, I have to set my default version right over here for WSL2. So I need to run PowerShell. So I'm just gonna go into my start menu. 
look for PowerShell. I'm going to run this as administrator. I'll say yes to the prompt. And then I can just uh, move this over and copy the line. And then I can paste it inside PowerShell, hit enter. And there we go. So you can see that operation has been completed successfully. Um, install distribution. No, we're not going to be doing anything else. Looks like that's pretty much the only last step that we needed to do here. Uh, so what I can do is I can just close out of this browser and close PowerShell. And I'm going to quickly shut everything down and just reload it and see if we can get a nice fresh start. Okay, it's just loading up right now and I think we're done. No, we're not. Okay, so we just got to run this in command prompt or terminal. So I'm going to copy this and I'll go to my start menu and I'm going to open up my command prompt and I'll paste in the line, hit enter. Looks like it's going to download some components there. Okay, it needs access for my through my firewall, so I'll allow access. And it looks like it's good. So let's go back now. Let's see if it wants to complain about anything else. Okay, looks like it's running right now. Priceless Vaughn. Sure, port 80. That looks good. And let's go over here. So it looks like we have that done. We have the daemon running. And now we have to open up some ports. And I'm going to do that next. Okay, so the port is not open and I feel that I knew that was gonna happen because I'd have zero of these ports open up on my router. So I'm gonna log into my router right now. I'm using a Ubiquiti gateway as my edge router. So I'm gonna be going into that right now and I'm gonna open up the ports. So that took a lot longer than I expected. Um, I had a few complications on my side, but I have everything going through my Ubiquiti edge device and through my modem and it's passing traffic back and forth. So we're up and running, everything successfully passed now. And what we can do is just click on continue. Okay, so it's now turned on. The node is ready to test. You just have to hit the switch to turn it on and off. And basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is have it on whenever you're using your system or when you wanna leave it available and turn it off when you're not gonna use it or have it available. It's gonna keep track of your availability and try to keep a, a record of that. So if you want to apply to be a super node later on, there's a little bit of a track record for that to go through. Uh, there's a lot more information about how this works on the website and it goes into a lot of detail. And what I'll do is I'll link that in the description below so you can read that further if you're interested in running a node for the Pi Network. But here we are, we're up and running. We're running a Pi Network node on a Windows 10 PC. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. It does get a little bit complicated because there are quite a few little components that need to be activated for it to be running properly. Uh, you can ask whatever questions and I'll do my best to answer them. This is the first time I'm doing it. As you can tell, I was guessing in some areas, uh, but it looks like it's successfully running. I'll leave a link to my blog that outlines all the steps in a little bit more detail in case this video wasn't as clear as I wanted it to be. If you did enjoy the video, please give me a like. I really appreciate it. If you want to know how this is progressing over time, subscribe to the channel and I'll be giving updates about my journey with this Pi Network note. And that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.